Uh, again, um, a big part of my uh, PhD research was into uh, slip and grip, um, looking at what could be classified really as micro slip, slip that's happening in a very few thousands of a second that we can't see with our eye but is absolutely vital to the way the horse starts to dissipate energy before the foot starts to throw into its full function. Um, and sometimes we put things on horses' feet that we think are beneficial to them because they're beneficial to us, but they don't quite work like that. And horses are a slightly different system. And you'll see that how some of these materials stack up against each other and um, been a practical farrier, a working farrier, I've actually compared shoes that we would buy as farriers on the market rather than just a scientific research shoe. You'll, you'll get a, a, an in, insight into how the foot slips, how the hook moves, and also it'll make you think about perhaps small things that we change in horses' feet that we think are insignificant can have a massive impact on them later on down the line. Um, we think we're doing it to enable them to say um, we're not giving them so much concussion but sometimes that loading, that shock loading has got to go somewhere. So we have to consider these little thing, little changes that we make can end up somewhere else further down the line causing them injury and illness. What is something that, from conducting this research that surprised you? Sorry? Well, what was, when you were conducting this research, was there something that surprised you? Uh, yes, well, uh, one of the main things is that, that the horses seem to be able to control the slip time or the slip distance. They seem to be able to acclimatise themselves to the shoes and they can alter it very slightly to make themselves more comfortable. Um, and again, shoeing's a necessary evil so we have to try and make that so as they can they can utilize their their natural systems on it um, as they would do if they were barefoot